Hey guys, Evgeny here at Telephone Digital. And in this video, we've got a special tutorial for you. This is a beginner tutorial for adding links into your Webflow navigation. Now, we could be making navigation from scratch, but for this specific tutorial, let's pretend that we already have a navigation installed on the site. We've got the component, and now all we've got to do is add the links and or the drop downs to the navigation. Now, keep in mind, we are using our own navigation component, which may be a bit different than your standard navigation, or it's using best accessibility practices, such as nesting links into lists, right? So without further ado, let me tell you what's on the agenda. First things first, we are going to show you a couple of methods of adding links. We're also going to cover various different link types. So what kind of links they can be. They can be external, internal. Uh, they can be based on relative paths. They can be leading to a specific section. They can be doing different things. Uh, afterwards, we're going to be adding dropdowns. And we're going to explain the dropdown anatomy. We're going to go over styling of that dropdown in order to make every, sure everything works. And lastly, we will be covering the debugging and we will be covering the old breakpoint responsiveness. Right, without further ado, let's get straight into it. As I said, these links are nested into lists. Lists have list items, list items have links. Best way to create the link is copy an existing one. Now we have copied an existing one. Let's make this link lead to Google. We are going to double click on the link uh, we're going to type Google. And now that we have this link and text set up, what we're going to do is we're going to click on letter D on your keyboard to open up this settings panel right here. We're going to change the type of link to the URL and we're going to type HTTPS www.google.com. And one thing that we must not remember must not forget is that all links that you're going to an external source need to be opened in a new tab those are external links internal links find to open in this tab hope that makes sense all right second method you can click on hotkey a or click on this button to find list item li search within this bar there is list item and we can also click a find the link text link is fine and we are going to take this class for existing link and call it and give it to the new link right so let's take this link and connect it to this section within this page this is the home page or this is not the home page this is let's see what page this is this use case page but let's go to the home page and we're going to take our users to this section, the problem section or challenges. We are going to add challenges ID to the section. So we're going to click on the section. We're going to click D. We're going to add ID and then back to the link. Challenges. And now we're going to click on the section here, right? And we can take the user directly to challenges section. Let's see how that works. And voila, this works good. Now, what happens if we go to another page? Would that work? And this does not work. So why is that? Essentially what happens is this link is this challenges section does not exist within this page. So essentially, this is how the link is set up to be. However, this is not the way that link should be set up if you are linking to a section within a specific page. So what we need to do is we need to go to a relative path slash. Since home does not have any extension, we're just going to leave slash hashtag challenges. Once we do that, we're going to publish the page. 
and within this published page we are going to uh, we are going to see how this works so now we are in the use cases page click on challenges and you'll see that you are now within the challenges section of the home page nice awesome so let's now move on to the new item we're going to try to add a drop down now this is another method to add different elements onto the page combine command plus e or control plus c to get this search bar and we're going to add a list item and within that list item we're going to add a drop down now drop downs anatomy drop down consists of the drop down drop down toggle drop down list drop down toggle has text block and an icon which is the chevron drop down list has a bunch of links hope that makes sense now this is an existing element we have another drop down page so let's add classes nav drop down now drop down toggle nav drop down toggle and it has a combo class snap link menu now this icon is not what we need since we have different type of chevron in our page we're going to copy it over clearly you can change the text here use cases or resource center let's say it's resources we have another element drop down list to open that up and see it in action click on the drop down click on letter d and show the main now we have these bunch of links but if we click on the link and then uh try to select a drop down list what we are going to do is uh try to style it nav drop list awesome all right now if we preview we will see that we have the initial um use cases navigation which is shown like this and then there is another navigation or drop down we have to click on it not the best user experience so why is that let's take a look at the drop down again if you click on the settings you'll see that there is this checkbox open menu on hover we need that check awesome but we still saw that the links are kind of too cluttered they're not spaced they're not spaced out there are no paddings that's because there's another element within the drop list and let's add it let's see list nav drop list wrap awesome we're going to nest those links into the drop down list wrap let's open the navigation now we can see that these are this these links exist so let's style those links right now we have styled them and let's take a look at this in action so we see that the links are styled everything works great however when we try to hover on top of these links it does not work now why is that well you can see within the anatomy of the page or of the element right the drop down there is a drop down toggle there is a drop down list let's open this up so you can see that there is some space in between the toggle and the list and essentially how hovering works is once you hover on top of the element it shows you the list or once you exit hovering the element it shows you nothing and since there is this gap in between the toggle and the list you're technically going outside of the drop down anyways the solution is quite easy you are going to need to create a bridge so what we need to do is add this not drop list apps and essentially this will be working amazing now 
all that's left is adding appropriate links to these resources. So adding destination and changing up the text. Uh, we already know how to do that, so I will not be explaining that. Last thing we need to do is we need to check responsiveness. Click on two, click on three, click on four. Doesn't matter, let's start from two because CSS cascades down. Click on letter D on your keyboard. So the navigation, and we can see everything here working. We can see all links showing. Since everything looks good, you may publish. And with that being said, you now have added new navigation links that are leading to external pages, that are leading to specific sections within specific pages. You have added drop downs. And with that being said, this is the end of the video. I hope everything makes sense. Hope everything was clear. In case you liked the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.